Today I've just received this big order of JO 3D printing filament from AliExpress. To be more specific, this is high speed PLA, which I have never purchased before. I've used a lot of their PLAs in the past and they've always been flawless. This is the cheapest high speed PLA filament that I could find on AliExpress in the UK ready to ship to me. So what I want to know is, is high speed PLA just a fad? Is it just a marketing term or does it actually hold up against the normal JO PLA? We're also going to test out what high speed really means. First of all, what is high speed PLA? Well, high speed PLA allows you to achieve greater printing speeds than normal. That bit's on the tin, that bit's quite obvious. But it does it by a special formula that it's made from that enables it to melt easier than normal PLA. So it can run faster, it can flow faster basically. The jury is still very much out on that one. A lot of people just say that it's manufactured to a higher standard and that it is even all the way around. So there is no change in the diameter of the filament which enables it to flow better. I will point out while it's on screen that these JO filaments are 1.1 kilograms. So the roll is slightly bigger and the diameter hole in the middle is slightly bigger. So I needed an adapter to fit onto my Bamboo Lab AMS. But the nice thing is you can 3D print the adapter. I am sure one day we'll be 3D printing our own 3D printers at this rate. So without further ado, let's test it and see how it compares up against PLA. This is going to be the first thing we're looking at. This is something that I have printing for another project. It's a wall step for a cat, but that really doesn't matter. What matters is the amount of time that it takes to print on PLA and then versus high speed PLA. Not a complicated print. There's a lot of structure there, but there's no supports or anything like that. And once I select generic PLA and hit slice, you'll see there that the time for just the print on its own is about six hours, which honestly doesn't seem that bad, especially if you're used to printing in PET-G, then for a 230 gram print, that's a pretty decent time. But let's print it, have a look at the quality of it, and then we'll move on to high speed PLA. Now I'm purely showing you this, not because I have any problems with my PLA normal prints, they're absolutely fine and the ironing is fine and you can see that it all looks good. It's just to give you something to compare to when we make our high speed PLA print in a second. So onwards with the high speed PLA print and that is exactly what we're going to select from this generic menu in Bamboo Studio. At the minute we're just going with the preset, I'm not going to touch any of the settings that are associated with it, the max flow rate or anything like that, saving that for later. But as you can see now, just by hitting slice on that generic profile, that it's now dropped to five hours, so we've managed to shave an hour off our entire time. So if you have a lot to print or many kilograms of prints to do, this could definitely save you some time, and for me today, this was the same cost as the regular PLA jail. I have five of these steps to print, so... It's going to be about a four hour saving because I've already printed one in regular PLA. And honestly, there's no discernible difference between this and the original PLA print, even though it took an hour less to print. The structure feels the same, the solidity feels the same, everything just feels exactly the same basically. But it's a relief that it all feels the same because that's essentially what I wanted. The PLA print was perfect and I want the high speed PLA print to be perfect, which it is. But there's something that's still playing on my mind. When I purchased this from AliExpress, it specifically says in the image that this can go up to 600 millimeters per second, which is where I want to be. That sounds extremely fun and dangerous. And according to this quick, rigorous Google search that I did, it says that my Bamboo Lab A1 can move up to 500 millimeters per second. And as we know, Google AI has never been wrong ever. So how do we put theory into practice? I went straight for the speed tab under the print settings in Bamboo Studio and went for where it says outer wall and inner wall and edited those settings so it went to the 500 millimeters per second maximum and 400 millimeters for outer wall because took the outer wall a bit slower and nothing happened. And that's because I missed something. Essentially, it doesn't really matter what settings in Bamboo Studio you change. It all boils down to the maximum volumetric speed or volumetric flow rate. This number takes a few different calculations together and basically just works out how much filament it can extrude. Don't worry, if you just want to see the printer go brr, we're getting there in a second. But if you want to figure out what your maximum volumetric speed is without being a complete physics nerd, then there's a rather simple print that you can do from Maker World which will tell you what the maximum is and you will find out what the maximum is because that is the point of failure. It's a really cool print that just sets all the settings to max and slowly increments how fast and how much flow rate actually happens. It starts off really slow, gentle almost, just such a careful speed around that circuit. This is probably 22 cubic millimeters a second, just above the basic bamboo flow rate for PLA. And then you get up into the flow rate of in the 30s and it starts going a little bit mental. 
This is when I started recording the fast array and it was actually the same time that it started to fail. So this is when I had to stop the print and have a look at how it did. Now you can see where I have stopped it that the last layers just have not applied at all. They have just completely missed because of the speed, they haven't adhered. And that's okay, that's how you test the maximum of an application is pushing it to its limits, I guess. But now you might be saying, what information can you actually garner from this failed print? And if you look very closely, there's a bunch of lines that have been engraved into the thing. The printer actually went slower to make sure these lines don't miss. So you can see exactly how each layer went. I can see about nine decent tabs there that have been printed, so nine decent levels. And then we can take that information back over to the write-up on MakerWorld and we see that the ninth level is about 36 cubic millimetres on the max flow level. And now I'm going to go out and test print a bend sheet just to double check that that 36 millimetres actually works on my printer and it doesn't just fly off. You can see that changing the flow rate value reduces the bend sheet's print time by about three minutes, which is a lot, but it's pretty negligible for, you know, a bend sheet. It also makes general printing a lot louder, noisier, more vibrations, stuff like that. I really wouldn't venture out of the basic high speed profile for this from Bamboo. There's just so many drawbacks and even though we've tested it, you still run the risk of it failing, which you really don't with a generic profile that's safe, it, playing it safe basically, that's what it is. It would save close to 20 minutes on that cat step print that I showed you earlier, but I already save an hour with the high speed PLA, I don't really need to risk it. And so to summarise, I think the high speed JOPLA from AliExpress is absolutely worth it and it can save you a bunch of time if you're doing some big prints. I wouldn't recommend delving deep into the bamboo settings and turning it on ludicrous mode and trying your hardest to get the most out of it. That's when you're going to have the most failed prints, but the default setting is pretty good. And I'm happy that it's going to save me quite a bit of time considering it's the exact same price as the PLA I was buying before. If you're interested in this filament, I'll have a link down in the description where you can buy some. It is an affiliate link, so it will help the channel. If you would like to see me do anything else with this high-speed PLA, throw it out of a window, for example, then please just leave a comment down below. And to anybody who has enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and liking. It helps a lot. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.